Good morning, Coach Slack here, uh, continuing our readings on the Synaxadian, the lives of the saints of the Orthodox Church. On this day, the sixth day of October, we commemorate the Holy Apostle Thomas. The Holy Apostle Thomas, also called Didymus, was born in Judea. His parents were poor, but they passed on to him a great love for the law of Moses. <clears throat> when he was still young, he drew apart from the noisy games of his companions to, to devote himself to reading and meditating upon the scriptures. His knowledge of God's word and well-disposed conscience enabled him, without hesitation, to recognize Christ as the Messiah spoken of by the prophets and to follow him as soon as he called him. He left his boat and his nets and became one of the twelve. He was persecuted, excluded, and stoned by the Jews, yet followed the Savior everywhere with such burning zeal that when Christ took the road for Jerusalem to offer himself for those who were going to kill him, Thomas said to the other disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When the Savior of the world had overcome death by rising from the tomb, he appeared to his disciples who were assembled with the doors shut for fear of the Jews. He showed them the marks of his passion upon his body, and the disciples were filled with joy. God so provided that Thomas was not then with them, and when the others told him that they had seen the Lord risen from the dead, he was unwilling to believe them. In his great patience and forbearance, the Lord appeared again to the disciples a week later, and asked Thomas to certify that he was well and truly risen from the dead in the flesh. He told him to put his finger into the holes in his hands left by the nails and to thrust his hand into his side pierced by the spear. In admonishing Thomas for his lack of faith, the Savior showed that we too are called upon to thrust our hands into his side, not physically but spiritually, to quench our thirst there at the wellspring of grace. <clears throat> Thomas was with the other apostles when, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down upon their heads in the form of tongues of fire. He was filled, like the rest, with power from, the, from on high for the proclamation of the world's salvation. And when the apostles went their separate ways, it fell to Thomas to bring the glad tidings to the distant lands of the Medes and Parthenians, which is Iran, and as far as India. <clears throat> At that time, there was in Jerusalem a man called Ambanes, sent by an Indian king to find an architect with skill enough to build him a palace that should surpass in beauty and adornment any constructed by previous master builders. The Lord made known to Thomas that this was the providential means for him to fulfill his mission. So he made out to Ambanes that he was a slave expert in the builder's art. They took ship for India, therefore, and arrived at the court of King Gungafar. The king was enraptured by the plan of the magnificent palace that Thomas laid before him and left him with a large sum of money for building it, before leaving for a three-year tour of some distant provinces. As soon as he had charge of these riches, Thomas did not delay in distributing them to the countless poor, starving folk whom the king and his nobles had taken no care for at all. As well as relieving the poor, the apostle worked miracles and preached the gospel to such a good effect that a great many pagans were brought to the faith. When the king sent to know how the building works were getting on, Thomas asked him for more gold on the pretext of finishing the roof. The king was delighted and immediately sent what he asked for, and it never entered his head that Thomas was giving it away as soon as he received it. All the more terrible was his wrath then when he found out that he had been tricked and that the saint had given all his money to the poor. Thomas was shut up into a deep pit, and the king had the most dreadful torments in store for him. But that very night his brother, who was grievously sick, had a vision of an angel who carried him away and showed him a magnificent palace in the everlasting kingdom of the righteous. The angel said to him, Behold, the palace prepared for your brother built for him by the Apostle Thomas. When he came to himself, he described all he had seen to the king, and how much more beautiful than any earthly dwelling was the palace Thomas had built for him in heaven. Completely overwhelmed, the king repented, released the apostle, and asked for baptism with his brother. St. Thomas then left for another kingdom, where barbarity and godlessness held sway with yet more violence. But in the power of the Holy Spirit, he succeeded in converting Tertia, the king's wife, her, her son Azanes, and her two daughters, Magdonia and Marca. 
He baptized them and taught them how to follow the way of perfection and exceses and the chastity. This seemed a peculiar and senseless way of life to the lustful king, and it threw him into a rage. He had St. Thomas seized and ordered five soldiers to spear him through on a mountain outside the city of Melipur near Madras. So it was that the apostle departed to rejoice forever with the Lord. He is venerated as the founder of the church in India. Through the prayers of thy saints, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. Amen.